an IT major student. And I'm Jackson Aglazebunyo, an IT major student as well. We developed this fingerprint attendance system because we're trying to eliminate the need of using paper and pen in attendance marking in Central University. So with this system, at least everything is on a database. The fingerprint attendance system is going to be perfect for using a biometric. So we chose the Node MCU over this microcontroller, which is the Arduino Uno, because of the size and the embedded feature, which is the wireless card, so that the device can communicate with the laptop or the um, preview screen or monitor wirelessly. This system is better because it's automated, its features are automated. So on a typical day, a student comes to class and then places his finger on the attendance. Instantly, it, recorded, it records the time he comes to class. Now, when the class is due, let's say two or three hours after, he then goes back and then places his finger back on the device. It scans and then it, 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 it displays goodbye Wilson. That is the student's name, in this case, my name. And the time he leaves class is being recorded. My stay in Central University has been a good experience. Um, I've learned a lot of things in this school. Um, some, some of which are creativity and um, enthusiasm. And this environment is so um, friendly and serene. The lecturers are so cordial. You can go to them if you're having a problem. They'll help you solve it. So the student lecture ratio is really good and it gives us the student the opportunity to actually seek help when necessary and not just class or um, IT help but help let's see if it's the profession you want to venture in and so on and so forth. I strongly recommend to anyone out there to come to Central University be it IT or any other program. At Central University whatever your dreams are you will be empowered to achieve them. and I'm a level 300 Doctor of Pharmacy student. A central University was introduced to me by my parents who also happened to be pharmacists. They had central interns who had exceptional behavior which led to the recommendation. Studying pharmacy in central has been a nice journey. The lecturers are very interactive and are helpful. We do tests and we are assessed weekly. There is a hands-on training for us students where we are given the opportunity to intern at various community pharmacies in different countries and are assessed accordingly. There is an international student office where we can go for assistance and support. I would recommend Central University to other international students because it has a conducive environment for learning and personal growth. an alum of Central University and I studied BSc Accounting and MBA Finance for my second degree. I must say the impact I received from the training of Central University is what has shaped my professional life. During my time we everybody had to do Excel, Word, PowerPoint and that is what as a professional I need to carry out my duty and the values of Central University being faith, integrity and excellence actually shape whatever I currently face in my professional life. When it comes to excellence, everybody around me will tell you the professionalism with which we work here in finance. One of the things that I always tell my colleagues is to make sure that whatever 
you have to do. Make sure it is done. No need to delay anything to prove your power or your superiority. And when it comes to faith and integrity, you realize that every student of Central University has a course that has faith liaged in it. So it shapes your Christian life, it shapes your work with Christ, and when your work with Christ is shaping, your level of integrity can be attested by everybody around you. You do not compromise on wrongdoing. So I recommend Central University Education to, to you to come on board for our graduate programs that will enrich your professional work and impact the work you do in your various um, fields. Also, I encourage parents to bring their, their awards on board to experience the Central University education. This is Nade DRJ, all students of Central University College. At the time, it was Central University College. I joined Central University College in 1999 when I had my third baby. My first baby was two years, second baby was a year, and third baby was two months. I joined Central University as a mother, and I loved what I had in Central University. The program I read was Human Resources Management and then I enjoyed every bit of the class. I had very good lecturers who encouraged me, who liked what I was trying to do. There were interesting days when I'll be, I'll be in lectures and then I'll need to run home for my babies. Despite all that, I had all the needed encouragement. The lecturers were awesome, the lecturers were very good, very interactive classes, lectures here and there. And then after Central University, I realized that this is a school I would need to send my children to. Despite all odds, when my children grew up, I told them no, it's Central University and no other school, because my experience in Central University has been awesome. The lectures were such that even after Central University, you still could go back to them. I could mention a few, but the list is so unlimited because every lecturer I had on Central University campus was a good lecturer, was awesome. And I got the encouragement too from Dr. Mensa Otabel, who in fact was my mentor. Before Central University, I should have gone to Legon. But I told myself I had a diploma and with a diploma I could work. So then why do you go back um, to school? But for the next 10 minutes so that we'll start the program. Thank you very much for your understanding. Thank you. It was worth my time. So you could be a mother and still go to school. And your choice should be Central University. If you really want to come out like the way I came out. And I'm a proud mother. I have three sons. Now, my sons went to Martin de Porres. They went to got all good schools. And I took them to Central University. My first son read law. And my second also was Adi, I can say, is a place to be. Are you a mother looking for an extension of your career? Do you want to further develop yourself? I would only recommend Central University because you will never regret it. Do you have children you would want to further their education? Why don't you opt for Central University? It's a school where lecturers have time for their students. And your son, your daughter will never regret
choosing Central University, making Central University his or her choice. Parents, Central University, Central University, Central University. I am Ezawa Godfrey Pengo, level 400 law students at Central University, and I am a Nigerian. My interaction with the lecturers has been amazing. From my level 100, they taught us how to answer legal questions, both problem questions and essay questions. We have a pattern in the law, and I can tell you now that I am doing better. I am not the best, but I am doing better. I've also come to experience different things from where I'm coming from in Nigeria. In Ghana, I learned things, uh, I learned there are different types of foods, such as the banku, the shito, um, different, a lot of things, even one man's housing. I never knew what that was until I came to Ghana and I'm enjoying it. Central has been an amazing experience for me my university education. It's the first institution I've ever gone to and I can say wholeheartedly that I enjoyed my stay. I would recommend other foreigners from Nigeria, Togo, not just the European countries, not just the white countries, but from black countries to attend Central University because it is the university for you, for your dream education. My name is Rosemary Malkwan Train. I used to be Rosemary Natui. I belong to the class of 2003. We were the second batch to graduate from the university. I currently am a management consultant. I run my own consulting firm. Uh, my time in Central University was a very interesting one. Um, it was new. The school was new at the time. Expectations were you are not sure what people would people who would go to this school would come out with or be. Because it's either University of Ghana or NUST or UCC. Um, so it was an interesting experience. Uh, I had interesting schoolmates. Uh, because it was a new school, actually it was the first time I had seen that the school had a, an internship program. And I thought it was a wonderful idea. Because while I was in class, you don't take a lot of things seriously. But being a prerequisite that you must go through an internship to graduate was fantastic. This is what led me to KPMG. Whilst in school, I think it's the conversations I've had with people, what I had seen in the corporate world. I wanted to work in any of the big fours. So before, uh, by my third year, I knew exactly where I wanted to do my internship and I had zeroed in on any of the big fours. And luckily for me, I had an opportunity of interning with KPMG. It was a fantastic opportunity. I believe that with the training and exposures we had had in school, we had um, most of the lecturers were not just academicians. Most of them were working and um, lecturing at the same time. So they brought the workspace into the classroom space. So you were not trained just on, academ on an academic level. Your, the kind of exposure and um, learnings that took place had a fusion between what happens within the corporate world and what happens within the classroom and how you do practical application and I believe that the internship program was fantastic. Actually my first uh, my first uh, week or two at work in KPMG my boss had said that she was quite impressed when she said central she wasn't sure what it is I had. She thought it was I was just come to go through the system and go away. It, they were doing their corporate social responsibility so 
giving opportunities to students who wanted to have a, a feel of the corporate environment. And luckily for, for me, I didn't disappoint her. Uh, my internship in 10 more years. So yes, I would say Central University is a good brand. Um, as much as the school will do all that it takes to make sure that students are prepared for the, for the job market, I also believe that the students themselves should take life more seriously and not say because you are in school, everything is just about academics. You would end up in the corporate world. So the behaviors and attitudes that you cultivate helps. It goes a long way to help. It helps build your personal brand and all of that. The wonderful thing about my experience in Central University is my son also went to Central University to read um, business administration, specifically in human resources. And that's what I did. I believe it's because I set a good example. Seeing what I had turned out to be, where I started from and what I had turned out to be inspired him to tow the same line that I had, I had told. And um, so we have two alumni of Central University students in my home, which is myself and my son. He graduated sometime in 2016. It's a good branch. There are a lot of schools out there, but it is the school, or when you're talking about these schools, it is one of the schools where if you allow yourself to be trained, and, and the school to go through, you, you don't just go through the system, but the system goes through you. You come out well-rounded, very confident, and prepared for the job market. I would recommend Central University to anyone who is thinking about tertiary education for themselves or for their, for their awards. I know it has a lot of, um, it gives opportunities for mature students as well to further their education. During my time in the school, my classmates were just not young people they were also mature students. So you got a, an opportunity of learning from both. And most of the mature students were already working. So experience, sharing experiences from the corporate world helps if you open yourself up to it. Central University, we are not just giving theoretical knowledge, but also real-life practical immersion. Our projects and research are targeted at solving real-life problems within our built and natural environment. My name is Jay Joseph Bafo, an architecture student. The faculty and facilities available to us make us industry ready. The projects I'm working on recently won an award when my colleagues and I visited the Netherlands. Central University makes you industry ready. I'm Blossom Dubati, an information technology student at Central University. My course is really relevant because it challenged us towards finding solutions to real life problems and the facilities are being made available to us to solve those problems. A few weeks ago, my department jointly hosted the first Pan-African Robotic Competition with teams from all over the continent coming to compete. I find that interesting because it develops the interest of kids towards robotics and technology. Personally, I chose computer science and I chose to do it here in Central University. Central University actually offers you the equipment and facilities you need to better your career because technology is the future. My name is Isaac Poffer, Kojoji Junior Datsun. Central University makes you industry ready. I'm Blossom Dubati, an information technology student at Central University. My course is really relevant because it challenged us towards finding solutions to real life problems and the facilities are being made available to us to solve those problems. A few weeks ago, my department jointly hosted the first Pan-African Robotic Competition with teams from all over the continent coming to compete. I find that interesting because it develops the interest of kids towards robotics and technology. Personally, I chose computer science and I chose to do it here in Central University. Central University actually offers you the equipment and facilities you need to better your career because technology is the future. 
My name is Isaac Poffa, Kojo Junior Datsun. Central University makes you industry ready. Apply now for a degree in environmental engineering, fashion design, landscape design, interior design, business administration, economics, law, nursing, civil engineering, architecture, computer science, IT, theology, farm D, and many others at Central University, Ghana's leading private Christian university. Admissions are open for the 2021-2022 academic year. Degrees are available on our campuses at Mutual, Christ Temple Abusokai, and Kumasi. You can also enroll in our MBA with various specializations. Scholarships are available for needy but brilliant students. Call now on 0303-318-583 or 0302-396-189 and speak with an admissions counselor. You can also visit our website at central.edu.ga for more info. Central University, raising transformational leaders through faith, integrity and excellence. I'm Aaron Wilson, an IT major student. And I'm Jackson Aglazedinho, an IT major student as well. We developed this fingerprint attendance system because we we're trying to eliminate the need of using paper and pen in attendance marking in Central University. So with this system, at least everything is on a database. A fingerprint attendance system is going to be perfect for using a biometric. So we chose the Node MCU over this microcontroller which is the Arduino Uno because of the size and the embedded feature which is the wireless card so that the device can communicate with the laptop or the um, preview screen or monitor wirelessly. This system is better because it's automated, these features are automated. So on a typical day, a student comes to class and then places his finger on the attendance. Instantly it, recorded, it records the time he comes to class. Now, when the class is due, let's say two or three hours after, he then goes back and then places his finger back on the device. It scans and then he, he, he displays goodbye, Wilson. That is the student's name, in this case, my name. And the time he leaves class is being recorded. My stay in Central University has been a good experience. Um, I've learned a lot of things in this school. Um, some, some of which are creativity and um, enthusiasm and this environment is so um, friendly and serene. The lecturers are so cordial, you can go to them if you have any problem, they'll help you solve it. So the student lecture ratio is really good and it gives us the student the opportunity to actually seek help when necessary and not just class or um, IT help but help let's see if it's the profession you want to venture in and so on and so forth. I strongly recommend to anyone out there to come to Central University, be it IT or any other program. At Central University, whatever your dreams are, you will be empowered to achieve them. and I'm a level 300 doctor of pharmacy student. Central University was introduced to me by my parents who also happened to be pharmacists. They had central interns who had exceptional behavior which led to the recommendation. Studying pharmacy in Central has been a nice journey. The lecturers are very interactive and are helpful. We do tests and we are assessed weekly. There is a hands-on training for us students where we are given the opportunity to intern at various community pharmacies in different countries and are assessed accordingly. There is an international student office where we can go for assistance and support. I would recommend Central University to other international students because it has a conducive environment for learning and personal growth.
Tako, an alum of Central University, and I studied BSc Accounting and MBA Finance for my second degree. I must say the impact I received from the training of Central University is what has shaped my professional life. During my time, we everybody had to do Excel, Word, PowerPoint, and that is what, as a professional, I need to carry out my duty. And the values of Central University being faith, integrity, and excellence actually shape whatever I currently feel. When it comes to excellence, Our Heavenly Father, you are most grateful unto you for this time. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for the privilege to be assembled here for this gathering. We acknowledge that you are right in our midst. And so we pray that may your presence be at work. May you lead us through and may it end successfully to your glory. In Jesus' name I call it that. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right. Once again, welcome to this event. We have, over the years, been having public lectures. And as I'm sure we all know, uh, the COVID period truncated much of those. The last public lecture we did was in November 2019, where we had Professor Fred Adair from the University of Ghana Medical School speak to us on the medical benefits of cocoa, which was a very exciting lecture. It was held at our mutual campus. We have moved the events to our Christ Temple campus, largely because of the traffic challenges that we know those who wish to attend these lectures will be confronted with. Today, I am pleased and thankful that we have the public lecture to be delivered by none other than the government statistician. I'll be reading his bio in a little bit. The topic is an important one and he will do justice to it. At a time in our history when there's so much that has to be happen and that has to be talked about regarding national policies and economic growth, we are thankful that the government statistician has agreed to speak on our platform. Professor Samuel Kobina Enim, permit me to read his bio. And let me take a little punch at him. Actually, when we first saw his original bio, we knew that that was a lecture in itself. So we had to pause a little bit, because when you read it, uh, so I'll read the, the abridged one. <laughs> and let me also add that we welcome all those who will be uh, joining this lecture through the live streaming on Zoom and other virtual uh, vehicles. Professor Samuel Kobina Enim is a professor of economics at the University of Cape Coast and currently the government statistician of the Republic of Ghana. In the several decades since he completed his Bachelor of Arts degree in economics, Professor Enim has distinguished himself as an eminent scholar and visionary leader with a keen sense of strategy and forward thinking. He received his Doctorate of Economics from the University of Manchester, United Kingdom in 2010 and was promoted to Associate Professor of Economics in 2013 and Professor of Economics in 2018 at UCC. At this point, I think I'll remove my mask. There's nobody close to me. And uh, His Excellency says that things are a little easier now. Uh, we take it with a pinch of salt, but I'll remove my mask for now. Where at UCC, where he's been lecturing since 2003, he teaches postgraduate courses in development economics, research methods and computer applications, applied microeconomics, microfinance, paradigms and poverty in Ghana, 
and Development and Finance. Prior to his appointment as the government's statistician, he held several leadership positions at UCC, including Head of the Department of Economics, Deputy Director, and then Director of the Directorate for Research, Innovation, and Consultancy, where he instituted a number of reforms, partly leading to increased research publications and productivity and visibility. He led the transformation of the Department of Economics in the School of Economics and was responsible for setting up the UCC Center for Data Archiving, Management, Analytics, and Advocacy, and the Center for the Microfinance, which mounted the first academic program in microfinance in Ghana. Since assuming office as the government statistician at the Ghana Surgical Service, in March 2019, he has led GSS to develop a five-year corporate plan and a new organizational structure and supervise the passing into law by Ghana's parliament, the Statistical Service Act of 2019. He promoted the development of a data quality assurance framework and positioned GSS to successfully conduct Ghana's first digital population and housing census in 2021. I think at this point he deserves a round of applause. The census we know uh, was a very challenging event uh, coming on the back of COVID. It was done smoothly, sir. Thank you very much. We commend the effort. Thank you so very much. In the wake of the outbreak of COVID-19, Professor Enim guided GSS to contribute significantly to generating data for decision-making by completing multiple values of surveys, supported development partners to track the effects of COVID-19 on business, the local economy, and households and jobs. A scholar of international repute, Professor Enim, has made significant scholarly contributions to the field of micro development economics and applied microeconometrics with 40 peer reviewed journal articles, five book chapters, 18 technical reports, four policy briefs. Broadly, his research areas and interests are in microfinance, poverty, health household issues in Sub-Saharan Africa and Asia with a focus on analytical techniques, micro-level data management, and microeconomic analysis. Individually in collaboration with other researchers, he has made outstanding contributions leading to investments in microfinance and reshaping its practice both in Ghana and internationally. Professor Enim is dedicated to promoting knowledge transformation across the continent and beyond, and passionately supports national and global development agendas by providing professional service to the academic community, National Statistical Service in Ghana, and several international bodies. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud and pleased to present to you your speaker for this evening, the government statistician, Professor Enim, with whom I serve on the National Development Planning Commission. Professor Enim.
Thank you very much, Chair Vice-Chancellor of Central University, the Chair of the Central University um, Council, Madam Florence Hatchfo, Pro Vice-Chancellor of the University of Central University, invited distinguished um, ladies and gentlemen. When I initially got the invitation to deliver this public lecture, I think in the minds of my colleague, Commissioner, Vice Chancellor Central University, it was going to be a tough decision for the government statistician to do that for the suspicion that he has a heavy schedule. Little did he know that I was going to jump on it because for the past three years, I've not had the opportunity to speak like an academic and I really would want to do that um, at this session. So Vice Chancellor Chair, indeed, it was an opportunity for me to reflect on what I've been doing in the past two decades and in the last three years, getting closer to policymakers, what I've been doing. I'll start by a very strong disclaimer, indicating that the views that I share here are strictly the views of Samuel Kobna and Nim. They should not be attributed to either the University of Cape Coast or the Ghana Studies Car Service that in the past few years I've been closely um, related to. And who, uh, why am I doing this lecture? It, passed, it partly falls within the reasons why I decided to leave the academic field over 17 years to get closer to policymakers because colleagues academics who are here would attest to the fact that Two things are happening in terms of the discussion around the ivory tower. Academics have held the view that policymakers in any way are not hearing us. And policymakers on the other side are saying that they don't understand the reality. So one of the decisions that I took at the very early stages post my PhD was to get, make an attempt to get closer to the policymakers, try to understand their world, and on the basis of that, make an attempt to bridge that gap between academics and policymakers. This reason became very compelling after the 2021 population and housing census. When Ghana Studies Car Service went around releasing the results, the question that always came to mind is, to what extent would MDAs, that is ministries, departments and agencies, and min metropolitan, municipal and district assemblies revise their strategy documents, given the census results that are coming up. So when the opportunity came, I said to myself that sandwich two public lectures around your inaugural lecture. So essentially what I'm going to do between now and the end of June is to provide this first public lecture, which is touching on conceptualization of national policies. My inaugural lecture would focus on the transition between data and policy, and in between conceptualization, data, and policy are two things that I want you to reflect on. And these two things are the whole idea around research and more specifically on estimation. So this first lecture, as I've indicated, is going to take us through how we conceptualize national policies, which will be followed by the data policy transition, and eventually we're going to look at conceptualization and estimation at the University of Energy and Natural Resources. When I put this topic out there initially, I said I bridge it and during the presentation provide the longer version of it. So while we see conceptualization of national policies, issues of capacity and practice, the longer version is what we academics, we try to do, which is the development of conceptual frameworks. So anytime you do research, you think about developing a conceptual framework. And the thinking behind the conceptual framework is what is going to lead you to the policy instruments that we require, and ultimately the targets, that is the immediate outputs, the outcomes, and the impact. One of the things that is missing in this conversation is the extent to which we track these things over time. So from the university point of view, how do we track the measurement of the teaching of conceptual frameworks? And from the practice point of view, how are policy make makers utilizing this? So this is, what, this is what is guiding the lecture that I'm giving out today. The last thing that I want to talk about 
Am I, am I biases? I captioned this national policies, but as you clearly saw from the bio, I have my biases towards empirical analysis and I have my biases towards economics. So the examples that I'm going to show here are going to be inclined towards quantitative use of data, the empirical perspective of analysis, and also the economics as a discipline. I put it broadly because the applicability of this across all national policies would not change. Let me start this lecture with a takeaway message. My takeaway message is, it is about time that we begin to think about refocusing, redirecting our attention away from what I call the procl proclivity of policy making, either standalone policy making or policy making that is guided not adequately by data. I do commend different governments, different political past parties on their propensity to make a number of policies. The take home message that we're getting from this lecture is that it is about time that we redirect this attention away from the propensity of making policies. I'm not saying stop making policies, but let us begin to think about how do we follow the rigor of conceptualization when you want to make policy. And more importantly, as a country, we begin to think about assessing their relative outcomes and impact. Indeed, we've done well in thinking about their immediate outputs. We've done well in thinking about their targets. And one of the things that I'm going to show is we've changed education policies quite a lot in the country. They've impacted, they've, they've resulted in increases in enrollment. But a, the question that I keep asking is, has it resulted in an improved comprehension relative to what we have two, dec two decades ago and what we have now? I put my lecture in three parts. And I was attempting to revisit my PhD days, where I said, have three empirical chapters. But in as much as I pushed, I got two. So the first I'm going to do is walk you through the performance of the economy. And we're going to ask ourselves some basic questions as how the Ghanaian economy has fared over the period. I draw some conclusions on that, and then move on to the issue of policy capacity and practice where I, I discuss issues related to how do we acquire knowledge in making policies? What is the practice of making policies? And on the basis of that, identify eight points that I propose strongly that we should use as a country in assessing policy capacity and practice. Obviously, I'm going to conclude with some um, recommendations on how to strengthen policy capacity and practice. Conscientiously, I have four questions. And I make great attempt to guide all of us in answering these questions. The first is, how well do we know the Ghanaian economy? The second is, what is on the corridors of development partners, policy makers? Is Ghana's development a paradox? And then I move away a little bit to ask the question, how have we engaged in a discussion on the Ghanaian economy. I looked at it from the statistics point of view and the anecdotal perspective, and then asked the most important question, has policy contributed to our development experience and the current socioeconomic characteristics that we have? I start with a quote from the first president, Osage for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. I've left out a portion of the quote, and the quote reads, we shall measure our happiness. And the portion that I've left about, I've left in this code, is, what I'm, is part of what I'm going to discuss during my inaugural lecture at the, at the University of Cape Coast. But I'm going to give a bit of that to you. In that code, it talks about, we shall 